So the guy goes, well, you house them. You open your house and you house them then, hypocrite. And I was like, I'm known to do that, as a matter of fact. I have housed LGBTQ youth in my home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I just wish people would, like, stop letting Fox News melt their brain, you know? <laughs> and, like, Western capitalistic, like, individualism, stop letting that, like, erode their capacity for humanity and, like, logic. <laughs> like, I just, I cannot believe, first of all, the comment and also, like, just how 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 bereft American U.S. American people are from like one of the strongest, most basic human instincts, which is mutual aid. So um, I I honestly can't believe that the moment I finally have access to internet again, after everything that's been going on, I go onto YouTube and I see that the Supreme Court is currently debating whether or not to criminalize houselessness, to criminalize homelessness, to criminalize the status or conduct of being unhoused. With lawyers, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> right now, these, these corrupt Supreme Court MFers are debating whether homelessness is a status or a conduct. Like, is it something that you do or is it something that you are? Meanwhile, like LGBTQ youth are being like disowned and put out from their families and having to sleep on the streets. Meanwhile, DV survivors are, are trying to escape or being forced to stay in precarious and dangerous situations because these, these out of touch, out of touch, wealthy, elite, corrupt people just cannot comprehend the fact that the U.S. is like one of the the last bastions of of the Western approach to to trying to approach and solve homelessness, which doesn't work. The staircase approach to homelessness does not work. To have somebody who is already in a in a precarious, a vulnerable, and a stressful situation, the burden on their shoulders to try to make them. Um, from being street homeless to make them try to climb the next step of of saving up and or getting a job interview while denying them access to housing. Like, I just... <laughs> even cavemen got this. You need a cave to go hunt and get food for your family. You can't... <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I should not laugh. But, like, it's just, like, the common sense is just so eroded. And, you know, I'm grateful, I guess, for the experiences I'm going through because it puts me sometimes next to people who listen to Fox News, like, like it's the Bible. And so I'm listening to Fox News and I'm like, is this really what people believe? <laughs> just, I'm not laughing at you. It's just, I, I'm not laughing at them. I'm just shocked. Like, how is it always the people who have the least, who are, are ready and truly capable of helping other people with just as little as them? And why is it so hard for people who have so much, who, who are in the U.S., who have internet access, who have a home, who have food in their fridge, why is it so hard for them to care for their neighbors? Like, I got this comment on, on YouTube. I was, I was watching this video I'll put it on the screen this video on, on homelessness and what's going on with the criminalization of homelessness in in um, on the Supreme Court and the um, and the the resistance, the protest that's going on, um, the the lawsuits that are preventing people in like San Francisco, the cops from San Francisco from doing sweeps, the, the type of sweeps that we saw Eric Adams forcing on street homeless people in in New York City and, and in, in Brooklyn, like. We have seen the violence of sweeps, and we have seen also Eric Adams from his bully pulpit gaslight us, inst almost institutional level gaslighting us and telling us, well, those who, who are trying to fight us or to stop us from doing these sweeps, they just don't want people to get housed. We want people to be housed. We also want people to be safe. We also understand firsthand that the, the places that you are putting them, these homeless shelters that you're putting them into, are violent, are, are dangerous, are, are, are breeding grounds for bullying and sexual abuse and, and drugs. Like, 
Oh my gosh, like when I tell you, my experience is they sent me to the worst shelters in New York. And I honestly feel like it was intentional. All of the shelters that that the other women in the shelters, other families in the shelters were like, you don't want to get sent there. You don't want to get sent there. It's where they immediately tried to send, send me to. Tillery Women's Shelter, um, Stadium Shelter. Like I have had a firsthand view of some of the worst, most notorious shelters in New York City. Um, and... I mean, I have never seen someone smoke crystal meth before, (laughs) but I mean, I've never seen that level of just like, of just like, if I could have left, I would have. But the options really and truly are like, go back to a precarious or abusive situation with family that won't use my pronouns, family that won't use my chosen name, family that might put their hands on me or go sleep on the street. And first of all, it's cold. Second of all, like there's so much violence and you know, you're exposed to the police. I just don't understand. Like, people are, like, missing the obvious, the obvious solution, which is to just house people. This is madness to act as though there is not an obvious and clear solution. New York City has more vacant units than they have unhoused New Yorkers. And someone in the comments of the YouTube, the YouTube interaction that I had said, well, it's not the government's responsibility to house you, it's your responsibility. And I just, oh. <laughs> the United States signed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights um, in 1948, one of the first countries to sign it, okay? The Universal Declaration of Human Rights proclaims in one of the articles that housing is a human right and it is the the responsibility of your government to ensure that you as a citizen have access to dignified, safe housing. And, and, you know, what's happening inside the shelters is not dignified. It's not safe. You're constantly degraded. You're constantly exposed to to harmful um, uh, substances, environments, treatment, you know, abuse, disrespect, retaliation. I just... (laughs) <laughs> and they act like it's just such a such a um, radical idea for the government to just house people. But meanwhile, you have countries like Finland who, like, I'm not trying to gas Finland too. Finland is like a 99% white ethno state, right? <laughs> they, are, they have a very small black population, a very small immigrant population. It's mostly white, you know, ethnic Finns, you know what I'm saying? But they had homelessness just as bad as the U.S., and they they changed their approach to solving it. You know, they did the staircase approach, the continuum of care approach to homelessness, just like we do, just like the U.K. does. But they realized in 2007 that it was not working. It doesn't work. It just don't work. It don't. And you can look around and you can, you know, you can look around at what's what's happening in the U.S. and also see very clearly it does not work. So they abandoned that approach to homelessness, the West's standard approach to homelessness, and they adopted housing first policy. Okay, they recognize the fact that it is indeed the government's responsibility to ensure that its citizens are not street homeless and exposed to to conditions which would shorten their lifespans or end their life immediately or incarcerate them. Your option should not be go back to wherever you are running from, whether it's an abusive situation from a partner or a family member or, um, you know, where whatever is happening in your home environment, or your option shouldn't be go back to that environment that you're running from, or go sleep on the street, or you go to jail. <laughs> because, you know, if you criminalize street homelessness, that is what you are telling people. You can't sleep outside, so we're going to put you into jail. Okay, and then the other option being to go into a shelter, which so many people who I have interviewed in the years of, of documentarianism, I have committed towards this this issue have told me the shelters are worse than prison, okay? The shelters are about confinement only, okay? When you are in these shelters, you are making money for the nonprofits that operate these private, private shelters. You're making money for them per head in a bed, just like the prison system. 
there's no there's no way for for you to distract yourself from the conditions of your of your confinement there's no television there's sometimes no internet access you are you are caged up 